Hello, Elijah here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to run Jest and Vite test unit tests inside of NeoVim. And at the end, I'll even show you how to debug one of those tests too. All right, so let's get going. So here I have a TypeScript application with some Jest unit tests. I can pull up the baked in terminal in LazyVim and run npm run to see what scripts we have available. And yes, test is defined, so we could run them with npm test. And it'll kick up Jest in watch mode. And boom, we have one test passed and one test failed. I can rerun the failed test and sure enough, there is the problem. Well, wouldn't it be nice if I didn't need to kick up the internal terminal or rely on another terminal tab or multiplexer window? Why yes, yes it would. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Thankfully, LazyVim already has a helpful plugin to get us started. From the docs, you can look at the plugins and extras, then look for the NeoTest entry. So we'll copy the import line with test.core and then switch over to our NeoVim configuration and we'll navigate to the Lua slash config folder and open up the lazy.lua file. From here, we'll paste in our test.core import and then save and restart NeoVim. And you'll see that lazy.invim is starting to install the NeoTest plugin. Okay, now let's close lazy.nvim and open up a new file called test.lua, where we'll paste in a bit of code configuring NeoTest. NeoTest itself has already been wired up in our previous step. The importance of this step is that it defines the NeoTest Jest adapter that builds on top of the base NeoTest plugin. So we'll add the NeoTest Jest dependency on line 16, and in the ops function, we'll register the adapter. The reason we're updating the ops and not doing this work directly inside the config function is that LazyVim already has code in its config for NeoTest to loop through all the adapters and set them up individually so that you don't have to. Okay, let's save and quit outside of NeoVim and restart. And we'll see that the NeoTest Jest adapter is installing. And when it's done, let's quit and change back to our Next.js TypeScript project with just unit tests. Then we'll open up NeoVim and open up our recent file of index.test.ts. And here are our tests again. I'll come down inside the first test and press leader tr, which will run the nearest test. And you'll see that nothing happens. Uh, well, I haven't tracked it down and fixed it just yet, but you'll just have to do it again and it'll work. You should only have to do that the first time, but there it is. Okay, so the tests ran and boom, there's the results inside of NeoVim. Pretty cool. Instead, if you wanted to run all the tests in the file, you could press leader TT and you'll see that our second test fails. If you want a higher level overview of your tests, then you could press leader TS to toggle the test summary, which shows up on the right as a pane with a status indicator next to each item. And you could close it with the same key binding. If you have a lot of errors, you can navigate to the next one in the buffer with right hard bracket E, and likewise to the previous one with left hard bracket E. In this case, it shows you a snippet of the error message, which could be helpful. Let's switch back to our NeoVim config and add another key mapping that might be helpful. We'll open up the test.lua file and then add a new section called keys. And we'll define a new mapping for leader TL which will run the last test that was previously ran. And to test it out, let's save this file and reopen NeoVim, opening the just test file. And as before, I'll hop down to the first test and run that test with leader TR, which runs it. Then I'll jump to the second unit test, which hasn't run yet, and then run our new mapping of leader TL, which will run our last test, which was the one above. And sure enough, it runs as expected. Cool. As an aside, if we open up the test summary as before, you could run one of the entries by typing R. Typing A attaches to the test results, and you can navigate through the output. And typing I jumps to that specific test. Think of that as inspect. Okay, well, not everyone uses Jest these days to run their unit tests. Some use Vtest as their unit test runner. So let's switch to a project that uses Vtest and give it a run. But first, if you liked what you've seen thus far, please consider booping the like button so it could spread to more people. Thank you, it really does help. All right, let's get back to it.
Okay, so in this project, I'll open up the home.test.tsx file. And as before, I'll hop down inside of one of the tests and type leader tr to run the nearest test. However, in this case, NeoTest tells me that no test found. Oh, bummer. Well, thankfully, the solution is adding another adapter for NeoTest that is specific to VTest. So let's switch back over to our NeoVim config, and I'll open up the test.lua file again. And we'll add an entry to the dependencies for neotest vtest And then in our ops function, I'll add a table insert to register the new adapter. All right, and I'll save and quit and relaunch NeoVim. And here you'll see that the neotest vtest adapter is being installed. And we can reopen the home.test.tsx file from before. And this time when we press leader tr, it'll recognize this type of test and run it. Yay. Okay, but what about debugging one of these unit tests? Remember the failing just test that we had before? Wouldn't it be nice to kick up a debugger session and look at that? Well, let's do that now. But before we could do that, let's open up our NeoVim config again. And we'll go back into our lazy.lua file. Thankfully, lazyvim provides yet another set of configs for us to use to help out with debugging. It's the dap core import. So I'll copy the import line extras.dap.core, and then paste it into our Lua file, and then save and quit NeoVim, and that should be all we need. However, you might be wondering, should we need to set up anything else? Well, no, and it already has been done for us. The TypeScript extra import that I was already using from LazyVim had nvim-dap settings already set up for us that we can now leverage, in particular using pwa-node when debugging code. So let's open back up our TypeScript project that has our just tests. And here you'll see the plugins defined inside the dap core import installing. And then we could bring up our unit test file again and navigate down to the second test. We'll confirm that it's still failing by pressing leader tr to run the nearest test. And yes, it's failing. And now we'll press leader and pause to bring up which key and see that there's a D entry for debug. So let's press D, and here we'll want to press B to toggle a breakpoint. And boom, there's a breakpoint indicator to the left on the line. At this point, we'll press leader T and pause for which key to see the D which will debug the nearest test, which is what we want. And that will kick up the DAP UI and start to kick up a debugger session. My terminal is zoomed in quite a bit, so your experience shouldn't be as cramped as this one. So now execution has paused at our breakpoint, as indicated by the yellow arrow on the left. Now let's step over this line by pressing leader D to see which key and typing capital O, which brings us to the next line where the expect call is. The top left panel shows local variables that are in scope, which in this case is the links array and the this implicit object. So you could interact with these, and I could expand the links and visually see that there are six of them and get more information. And I can move down to the expressions pane and type in something for it to evaluate, like links.link, and it'll show that there are six. And when you're all done, you could press leader DT to terminate your debugging session. Thank you again for joining me on this testing journey. If you find this content helpful, please consider subscribing if you haven't already and maybe even becoming a member as well. There are some additional benefits for members, and it helps support the channel. All right, until next time, keep learning.